The lands between of Elden Ring are just looking for an excuse to kill you. Fortunately for you, tarnished, IGN's got your back. I'm Brian Altano, guiding you through Elden Ring's toughest fights during the opening hours of the game. This is IGN's Game Prep, presented by 5 Hour Energy. It's the one when you gotta get stuff done. Now, I suppose you could start by sprinting into the unknown, but, well, it's best to do some preparation first. Once you've completed the tutorial, you'll find yourself in Limgrave, the opening area of the game. Don't worry about this golden knight on a horse, we'll be back for them later. Instead, get to the Church of LA on the Hill. Here you'll find Kale, the merchant, and an anvil where you'll be able to upgrade your items in the future when you receive more smithing stones. Grab a torch and a crafting kit from Kale if you have enough runes, and then head northeast towards the gatefront ruins. Some of the nearby enemies are a little tricky, but whether you use stealth or all-out combat, this area is great for finding more advanced weapons like the Flail or the Lord Sorn's Greatsword, as well as a map fragment detailing West Limgrave. I offer you an accord. All that's left to do is meet Milena. Once you've discovered a few sites of grace in the overworld, a maiden will introduce herself. Milena enables you to spend your runes to level up, and she also grants you the ability to summon the spectral steed, Torrent. Now, on horseback, you'll be much deadlier against larger foes, and he makes getting around much easier. With a few levels into your favorite stats, some shiny new weapons, and an anvil to improve them on, you're ready to start taking out some bosses. These are the five bosses to defeat first in Elden Ring, presented by 5-Hour Energy Shots. From the Church of LA, go directly north and find a small entrance to Groveside Cave. Rest at the Site of Grace, get your torch out, and clear out the den of wolves blocking your path. Through the fog wall, you'll be confronted by the Beastman of Farum, Azula. This guy has got a massive cleaver and will flip for days if you let him. The trick to fighting this guy is to stay back since most of his attacks don't have much range, except this one. Oh, and this one. Identify openings in his attack patterns, strike when you can, and then back up. His health is small enough that chipping away like this shouldn't take too long, and you'll earn the Flame Drake Talisman, which is great for reducing fire damage. This next boss will be of particular interest to magic wielders. Northeast of the Agil Lake, you'll discover the Waypoint Ruins, and there's some troublesome toxic plants up here that like attacking with magic, so watch out. Take them out or just run past them entirely and head down this staircase to the boss. Mad Pumpkinhead is enraged and ready to take you on. They frequently close the distance, so it's important to dodge carefully. This flail hits hard and far, so dodge to the side at the right moment. Now, Pumpkinhead's attacks are fairly strong, but they are short combinations of attacks that leave you with lots of brief windows of opportunity. So don't get greedy. Sneak in one or two hits before backing off. Coming in with heavy jump attacks can also break their stance if you're lucky. Like the Beastman before, Pumpkinhead's health isn't great, so it won't take long to whittle them down. Once Pumpkinhead is defeated, you'll unlock a new Site of Grace and access to Sorceress Selles, a Glintstone Sorceries vendor perfect for spellcasters. Very well. You are now my protege in Glintstone Sorcery. Okay, remember that Golden Knight from earlier? Well, let's pay him a visit. Now, armed with stronger weapons and your trusty Spectral Steed, you've got the speed and the power to outmaneuver this intimidating foe. Remember that while riding Torrent, your triggers and buffers do a light or heavy attack on the side of the horse that you press. Line up your attacks appropriately. Torrent can also double jump, which is great for jumping over the Tree Sentinel's wide sweeping attacks. The second jump also allows you to change direction at will, so use that mobility to get behind the Sentinel and attack that horse's hide. Now, the Sentinel has a number of fast attacks that you will need to watch out for. If you feel endangered any time, you can press the dodge button to get a quick burst of speed from Torrent. Now, once the Sentinel's health is low, it will start to attack more desperately. But if you can dodge each attack and use the openings to get some damage in, the Tree Sentinel will be down and out in no time. Okay, this next fight is a great place to use your Spirit Calling Bell if you have one. If you don't, well, we have a guide on IGN.com to help you unlock one, so go get one. Otherwise, use the summoning sign outside of the boss room or bring in a friend to make this busy fight more manageable. 
West of the Tree Sentinel is a slope that takes you to the beach and past this really, really miserable looking giant. Follow the beach to the south to come across a cave entrance past this cluster of shrieking demi-humans. Whip out your torch and clear out the half dozen demi-humans in your way until you reach the airy cavern. As you move further inside, you'll alert the chiefs and their subject to your presence. You can avoid upsetting both of them by staying near the entrance to the cave, but sometimes you might have to start fighting both of them. These chiefs move fast, hit hard, and won't give you a break. So use jump attacks to stay agile and clear out the regular demi-humans in order to give yourself some space to fight. Whether you have summoned more help or are running solo, remember the chiefs are easily staggered by jumping heavy attacks. Focus one chief and simplify the battlefield by removing one of them before focusing on the other. Defeat the chiefs to find a tunnel on the other side of the cavern. This takes you to the island south of the map, which houses the abandoned Church of Dragon Communion. This will come in handy later. Okay, last up is the biggest foe in Limgrave. In the middle of a Gil Lake is a group of lost souls performing a ritual. Ride in on Torrent to get close and... Well, that takes care of them. Now, let's work on the dragon. This flyer has a number of attacks designed to be avoided on Torrent, so focus on staying on horseback in this fight. The dragon has two different types of attacks to watch out for, ground and air. Most of the time the dragon is airborne, you will need to prepare to avoid a fire-breathing attack. This is usually as simple as galloping quickly in one direction to avoid it, but watch out for when the dragon dive bombs you. This is a really, really hard attack to dodge, so craft some Roa Raisins that you can feed the torrent to keep his health up. When the dragon is on the ground, it's time to get some damage in. Most of its attacks are slow, which means as long as you can watch out for getting stomped on, you can get a few good hits in after most attacks. Now, another great opportunity to attack is when the dragon breathes fire on the ground. If you're close enough and out of danger, circle around and deal damage while it finishes its onslaught. Stay agile, heal as necessary, and the dragon shall be vanquished in no time. It's only the start of the game and you've already slain a dragon. Now that you're armed with knowledge, power, and satisfaction, it's time to press on towards Stormvale Castle on the cliff. Elden Ring is full of secrets and surprises, so be sure to check out the things that Elden Ring doesn't tell you, there's a lot, or our full guide on IGN.com. And a big thanks to our friends at 5 Hour Energy for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching Game Prep. Ah.